how is Holden different from any character that you've played before? Yeah, um, Holden, uh, one of the things that I, I like about him, which is uh, sort of a driving notion of our show, is this, uh, the way that he grows up sort of in front of the audience and during the season. I mean, he was in a coma for 12 years, so he grows up in front of the audience. So I feel like that sense of discovery and that sort of innocence of the character and, and sort of bringing that sort of adolescent sort of behavior and sort of mindset into the role was something that I hadn't done before, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And even when Holden was younger, we see that he had an interest in space and that sort of thing. Can you talk about that? Yeah, Holden always sort of, even, even before when he was the 13, as you see in the pilot, he um, just thought the, the world and life had, had something to offer. Like, it was something different. He wasn't his typical sort of, you know, preteen thinking about, you know, all the preteen things that they usually <laughs> do. He had sort of a sense of what's, what's my purpose? What do I do? And, and how is the world sort of connected? So he was always interested in sort of inter sort of sort of space and time and sort of what, what was his purpose in life. So that may or may not influence sort of what, what happens to him. Is it difficult to play a character who, for all intents and purposes, still may have the mentality of his younger self? Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. It, it was a fun uh, sort of part of the show, as, as I reference, is going in and anything that he wouldn't have experienced before, you had to go in sort of like a blind eye. And it was, it was fun going in because a lot of these experiences that you'll see him experience, a lot of us did growing up. There's a lot of adolescent sort of behaviors or events and just sort of things that we do that it was cool sort of once again reenacting and doing on screen and you know as Holden. And how jarring was it for him to get back to this world where now his brother is suddenly like more mature than he is? I was gonna say it's, <laughs> it's a very cool sort of uh, position that um, John uh, plays as Luke, my brother, and it's a it's a very fun sort of interesting brother, I don't know if that's a rivalry, but sort of position that they're in for he's more elder in mind now, but younger in body, and still sees his brother as his older brother, but really now I'm the younger brother in, in my mind, let alone that I'm still sort of older in body. So it's cool. We both sort of teach each other things, I'd say, in the series, and it's, it's a fun sort of older, younger brother sort of pass off. Is there any negativity coming from Luke that now his brother has suddenly come back and is the center of attention? There's definitely a... Uh, the Matthews family was a very, it is and was a very closely knit family. And I think that it was as it would be for any real life situation. If one of your children goes into a, has a devastating accident, goes into a coma, it's, it's heartbreaking. And it pulls on a lot of strings in different ways for different people. So I'd say Luke would be, you know, very happy to have his brother back. But once again, after coming to terms with unfortunately losing, really losing his brother for that long, he now has to come to terms with having him back. So that, once again, puts the family in a very interesting situation that they sort of have to be like, wow, we, we have this, my son or my brother back. How does Holden manage to stay in such good shape for 12 years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very rigorous um, physiotherapy, I would say, would be that, you know, the nurse did a good job and, you know, put the weights in his hand and, you know, did stuff like that. So, you know, it's a... It's part of the, it's, that's what everyone does when they're in a coma, I think. Yeah. And does anyone <laughs> find Holden's late night strolls to be a bit strange? Uh, I would say so. I think it would be odd if no one <laughs> thought that they were a bit strange. I mean, uh, he certainly doesn't know what's going on. And uh, so it will be interesting to see if it plays out how exactly he gets to where he finds himself waking up and sort of what that means, really. And what kind of abilities does Holden have that you're allowed to talk about? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tease a little bit. You, <laughs> you might have seen in some of the trailers as well as uh, a few little snippets we released that B has sort of this telekinetic energy that he can will things to move with his mind. So it's a very interesting interaction with the matter and the energy in this world that he's able to interact with. And sort of the boundaries of that you'll have to watch to find out. And in one of the early episodes, there's a scene where it seems like he puts off a lot of heat, mm. enough to make these, like, you know, candles just melt. Uh, what's that all about, and can you tease anything about that? Yeah, there is, once again, sort of an interesting relationship between Holden and the objects around him. So I would like to say that it's an interesting sort of way to think, what can, he can move things with his mind, but what else can he do? Things are melting, things are being manipulated around him. So 
clearly he's not quite in control of it yet. Can he get in control of it? And if he's melting things around him and throwing people around, hopefully he's not going to hurt anyone in the process that he, you know, he loves and cares about. Now, in the pilot, Holden is reunited with his best friend, Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about the relationship and how it might have changed in the 12 years he was gone? Yeah, for sure. There is, I mean, Kevin was his, his best friend back in the day, and you'll see the two of them, you know, they're, they're best friends. They're talking about girls and going into high school, and Holden's being very philosophical about things, and Kevin's kind of shooting. It's, it's a nice, friendly camaraderie as kids, and... And fortunately, when Holden falls into his coma, he wakes up and, I mean, those 12 years, let alone any 12 years, but from, you know, 13 to 25 are such defining moments in anyone's life, let alone Kevin's life. So he has to really reintroduce himself to his best friend that for him feels like yesterday that he just fell into this coma. So it's, uh, it's someone that he wants to connect with, but he has to, you know, make sure Kevin's really who he thinks he is. Now, Holden, in the first episode, also ends up in a bar at some point. Do you think that's his own attempt to be a grown-up, in a way? <laughs> he, um, well, I think it's a new experience for him. He would definitely have never uh, found himself in a bar at 13 or younger. So, I mean, it's another one of those aspects of the show where you see someone growing up. It's his first time at a bar, and it's something that, you know, if you're able to be at that age where you can get into a bar and have a drink, everyone will remember the first nervous time waiting, the first time you show your ID and they go, come on in, so, or even just ordering a beer. So once again, it's sort of those different avenues that we explore in the show. And did you have a favorite superhero movie or TV series growing up that... Absolutely. I loved sort of superhero movies and action figures and growing up, I mean, I religiously watched... Uh, I watched Spider-Man, I watched the Batman animated series, I watched like Justice League growing up, I always loved like the Avengers and like Superman and all this, so I loved both Marvel and DC universes um, growing up, and I, and I still do to this day to be honest. And what was your reaction the first time you saw the Beyond pilot finished and got to see yourself in the middle of these effects? <laughs> That's it, speechless. I, I really, it was such a, a cool experience being able to embody a character that had these like superhuman abilities and it was, it really is a dream come true for me to play and exactly the first time watching it, let alone still when I see it, it is really cool and it's a really a good, it's a thumbs up to our, our directors, our entire crew as well as our post-production, everyone putting it all together and they really have made something that in my mind and I love, I think it looks quite beautiful. And what can you tell me about his relationship with Willa? Willa is a, a very mysterious character that you meet right in the pilot. And she is someone that finally offers him answers to something that he doesn't know what's happened in 12 years. He feels completely out of place. And she offers him sort of a, a, a hand of hope to be able to offer him possibly answers what happened and why he was in a coma to begin with. So. She's definitely an interesting character, and you'll, you'll get to know her more in the season. And Holden very quickly finds himself in the middle of a lot of danger. Can you tease anything about that? Well, he finds these <coughs> abilities that he has the, to be very dangerous for him, but people clearly see that these can be harnessed and used for their own selfish gains in some sort of way. So he finds that there's an opposition. Our antagonists in the story swoop in quite quickly to try to grab hold in so that they can take these powers and harness them for themselves. And since everybody in town seems to know who Holden is because of what he's been through, mm -hmm. does that make him even more cautious about using his abilities in public? Definitely. It's not something where he is an unknown person where if something were to happen to be like, who's that running away? When he walks into a restaurant, when he walks down the street, when he just arrives home from the hospital, there's like press, there's reporters, there's people always staring and pointing at him. So. He is in the public eye right away, so for him to try to, you know, experiment and hopefully try to take control of these powers, he has to make sure that no one finds out or else more people, as we referenced before, could come after him. Now, Freeform is doing something very different with the distribution for this show. Yes. What was your response when you heard about that? So excited. I, I think it's a really, really awesome way for our fans of the show to be able to take Beyond and watch it in one swoop. I, I, our episodes that we have are really cool, and our show gains this, this momentum as it goes through. You learn more about characters. You're intrigued by the mystery. You see all this action, and this is intensity with the show. It's amazing to be able to offer to our fans to go, hey, you like that episode? Try the whole season. 
go for it. So if you want to watch it week to week, perfect. We've got a week to week. But if you are binge watching Saturday afternoon type of person, go for it. Watch the whole season. And how do you think Beyond is different from any freeform show that we've seen before? I think it offers a lot of cool sort of factors. And I think that, you know, in sort of big swoops, I think there's a lot of sort of action intensity. It's quite, we keep it, try to keep it like dark and gritty. And we've got these suspenseful moments that are really cool and stunt work that we're able to do. And as well, we've got this, this character who is, is growing up. And he, you get to see him go from a boy when he wakes up and progress through his manhood, really, as he learns and finds out about the world, but really finds out who he is as himself and picks those avenues of life that makes him into the person by the end of the show that you'll, uh, you'll see him do. And were there any actors or directors that really excited you to get to work with on this show? I, it was such a privilege to uh, be working with, really, and quite, quite honestly, all of the people that I got to interact with on the show. We had a absolutely amazing team of directors that um, were episodically directing us. Uh, we had some recurring directors that were amazing, and as well as the cast were really uh, m my family that I was shooting with every day. They were my friends, they were my close, close friends, and I still talk to all of them to this day, and we're really just hoping that everyone's going to love the show, and I love the crew, and I loved all the directors, and it was a, it was a great vibe to shoot in, and I think it made us be excited to come to work each day. And uh, how, this is like going back to the beginning, but how did you get this, like, can you talk about the audition process for this role? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, the, the script right off, off the bat, it created, our, our show is created by Adam Nustarv, and he, this, this script was, it was amazing. Having, having read it, it was an amazing story, it was an amazing journey that this character, just glimpsing into reading the pilot episode, so I was, right off really really interested in the in the part and um i read for holden i actually read for luke as well but um they thought holden was a better fit for me and through auditioning through callbacks through testing and all of the table reads and you go from one step to another i was very fortunate and still think i am to this day to be sitting here talking to you today and you were talking about how the fans might want to just keep binge watching you know when they're available did you have a certain kind of anticipation for new scripts to come in oh <laughs> we all did. Oh my gosh, we have this. Uh, whenever we get scripts, we would be texting it, the whole cast. Like, oh my gosh, did you figure out this? Oh my gosh, when are we getting the next episode? Or oh my gosh, did you see what happened in that one? So it was a. It was so much fun. I mean, even for us, as you mentioned, shooting, we don't. Ne we know arcs, we know storylines, stuff like that. But specifics and sort of the fun, gritty conversations or sequences or whatever it is are really new to us until we get them in our hands to be able to read them. So. Once that sort of process starts rolling in, it's a very fun discovery of your, your character, what they're doing, and as well as with the rest of the other characters. And for my last question, why do you think people should tune in to Beyond when it premieres? I think people should tune in because we are giving so much that you're going to be intrigued by. You're going to see intense action. You're going to see sort of thrilling storylines. And there's also amazing dramatic aspects of relationships and characters and ups and downs and oh my gosh did they say that or oh my gosh what happened to her so there's a lot of sort of cool dramatic aspects action sequences and sci-fi elements to the show that i think are really going to attract our audiences to come watch